This week I want to talk to you about the new Jayco Toy Hauler Base Station 2024 model. We have a Jayco Base Station 2022 model and I have invited Daddy here to come and give us a chat about what we're looking forward to and not sure about on the new model that was launched at the Melbourne show last month. Hi, I'm Emily and I run the Organised Mum Lifestyle YouTube channel. I post every Friday and we go out in our Jayco Bay Station on our adventures with our two toddlers. I also post about organisation and different hacks and tips about being an organised mum, but being out there in the outdoors in our caravan is what we love to do in the beautiful country that is New Zealand. So we've heard about the Jayco Toy Hauler Base Station 2024 model for a little while, but we hadn't seen any photos. Last month in Feb 2024, they launched it at the Melbourne show and they showed a little bit of a teaser. We here in Auckland haven't actually seen it. We're going to have a chat about what we think based on the videos and the photos that we've seen. I'm going to go really shallow. I like the colour. It's gone from what a creamy white colour that you can get it in and a grey colour to an olive green. I quite like that one. I think it looks good. But I think the big thing they've done is they've got rid of the pull-out bed. Now we love the pull-out bed because it gives us a lot of space. But I don't know, I'm not sure. What do you think? Yeah, so there's been a lot of controversy on forums around it being a, a fold-out canvas bed and some people not liking the idea of that. For us it's been fantastic because you you don't lose any space to in the inside the caravan to the bed. The bed folds out the front, so it's been really good. And we've had our canvas for two and three yeah, years three now. Years. And it's as good as the day we got it. So there's been no mould. It is wet sometimes when we put it away. It's been fantastic. It just creates that extra space so you keep more space inside. So it hadn't really been a problem for us and we, we like that. Um, so yeah, possibly a, a drawer is the, now the bed's more in the new Jayco. Um, they do seem to have extended it a little bit, but it looks to be mean that you still lose around a foot or to two foot of caravan space to the bed, uh, which isn't massive, but it's just a little bit. So it would mean in here, the bed probably comes to the edge of this sofa area. Um, but it's great they've made it a little bit longer. Yeah, that means originally it was a 17 or 19 foot models you can get, and now it's 23 or 24 foot, which I think is quite long. Now I have to admit, I'm not the one who tows it, so how would you feel about towing something that long? Um, yeah, I mean the pictures we've seen, and there's been no drawings yet. Um, I don't know quite how they've managed to gain the length without, you know, drawbar length versus body length. Yeah. So there's a chance that it's actually not much longer to tow. Um, but once you're towing something big like the base station, anyway, you know, it's not uh, one or two foot extra is not going to make a big difference. One thing we do find at campsites is um, nine meters sometimes tends to be the, the 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 cap for a lot of these campsites we go to. So even we have to make sure we ring ahead to make sure we can park this mm -hmm. caravan. So an extra foot in those smaller campsite bays can make quite a bit of difference, uh, particularly when you've got the base station with the folding back door. Um, so we sometimes have to make sure we put the back down before somebody else has moved in behind yeah. us to get our stuff out of the back of the caravan. Most of the time it works, but having an extra foot might just push then the tailgate over someone else's pitch or mean you can't get in the back at the campsite. I do notice when you say about the drawings, they haven't updated the Jayco website yet because um, I know it was only just launched. This is being filmed March 2024, so looking forward to seeing it on the Jayco website and what it's going to look like. I think the rain's getting worse. It's been great, hasn't it? been nice, nice sunny days for weeks and then you've picked the rainy day to do the video. Well, that's kind of the point. We're not out and about. No, I suppose so. Talking about layout, we noticed in the new model they've moved the bathroom uh, closer to the bed. Good and bad. They've kind of swapped the sofa with the bathroom. One of the good things I like about that is the bathroom door on the 2020 model opens at the same place as the fridge. So if you've got the fridge open and the door open, they don't touch, but they're all quite close. So it does mean there's a bit of a staggering, which is quite good. Um, the big thing though, is we're sat on the sofa bed area, and this is essentially a double bed. We've got the insert and we use this for loads of stuff. So what do you think about that? Well, yeah, there are two points. So the bathroom, I think they probably moved the bathroom more forward to get it away from the wheel arch because then that means you've actually got a bigger floor space for a shower potentially because you've lost a bit to the wheel arch. Uh, but it works fine where it is. Um, and then, yeah, big thing by losing this slide out, we've gone from a sofa that effectively can seat six um, down to a sofa that can only seat probably two. Um, and then you've lost this distance here of 
you know, around 600 mil or so, you've lost you've lost that extra space and capacity. So that's a big change. Mm. And given the fact you've got, even without this bed in here, we've got four bunks in the back. We've got obviously the fold out at the front. So that's six people that you can house. You've now only got a two seater sofa. Whereas at the moment we've got six practical beds and six seats on the sofa. And then you can turn this sofa into a double bed. I suppose with the new one, you could probably turn that into a large single. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's it's quite a change, you know, on those wet days. Uh, if it's really hot and you want the aircon on, sit inside and have dinner. Yeah. Um, losing two, a good two spaces is big. And with us on this bed, we tend to leave it as a bed and day bed. And the kids sit on here, they watch telly, they, they, they play games. You just wouldn't have that capability anymore. So it probably fits in with the base station maybe just moving up a few ages. So moving away from small kids more to you know, teenagers kind of thing. So it's okay, it just makes a change. One nice thing about the new bed layout, um, it looks like um, they've gained a bit more space at the front. Because the fold out actually has to sit within the, the confines of the caravan, you lose about eight inches either side. Um, and by moving the bed inside and therefore being able to move the bed completely towards the one wall, You've now gained space at the foot of the bed and they've put a nice cupboard in there so that that looks great for space um, and then at the head now they've now put a new small window over the head which is great so you can then in bed you can look around and see what's going on outside uh, with the pop out you have got um, windows all round but we we never have the windows open and we've got our storm covers on the outside as an extra layer of warmth and just privacy and again we never open those so we don't have any light in the fold out so We've now got a window at the foot and a window at the head, so that's a really nice um, feature. So I think that is a good orientation option, uh, and no doubt the bed's probably just a little bit easier and more comfortable to move around. I wonder if the mattress is a bit better as well. Um, so yeah, it's a good point about the mattress. Um, with it being the fold-out, the mattress actually has to fold in half, so it's a little bit uncomfortable, the fold-out mattress that we have, so we have to put a topper on ours. Um, but we do talk about that a bit more in our What We Love About Our Base Station video, so have a look at that one. I noticed in the new one, the lighting is slightly different. It's uh, strip lights and LED spotlight. We have the manual surface mounted blue and white lights. I really like the blue feature, which is quite handy at night time, uh, but I don't know if they've still got that. They might have it due to the fact we haven't seen it. I'm not sure. Do you think they've got it? Yeah, I think they've probably got it. A lot of those, the new, all the caravans at the show tend to have those different mm. colours uh, mixed between keeping your night vision at night when you're walking around the caravan and trying to repel mozzies and insects. So I think the Jayco will still have that in some form. But yeah, they've gone from the surface mounted switchable lights in the base station, because the other the other range is, hasn't got those anyway. And they've now gone for more of the uh, kind of inset spotlights down the roof, you know, maybe six of them. Um, so that's different. That's more in keeping with some of the other caravans we've seen at the show. Yeah. Um, not that I necessarily prefer that, but it's just a change, yeah. I like the lighting above the bed, um, under the cupboards. That's quite nice, that'll be quite nice for reading. Um, it just looks a bit smarter, I think. Yeah, we've got the, the strip lights we have up here, which are the nice long strips um, over the bed. It hasn't got one, it's got mm. one of these surface mounted lights. So that there's no reason not to change that. Yeah, I mean, potentially, unless we can switch that to blue overnight, so it's dark, whereas the strips you can't. So at night time, you have to keep all the strips off. Yeah. So you do need that second option, uh, particularly in our case, because we've got two small kids which is one of the reasons we went for the base station, because you've got a separate compartment area, they can be off in there. You need, you want to keep the, the, the caravan really dark or in that blue light with the okay, one or two of the blue lights on. So with a, if, 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 there's, if the option isn't to have maybe just one light you can switch to blue, we can switch uh, one, two, three. We can switch four lights, I think it is. Yeah, four lights to blue. And if at night time we can just have one of them on blue, Whereas if the new the new version, you have to put them all on blue, it's still going to be quite bright for kids and things at, at night. So it'll be interesting. Um, we did notice on the, the the last generation of this version that they've obviously just switched from, that they'd got a bit more um, a bit more adult based. So they'd they'd uh, move the light switches higher up and in the bathroom they'd put the switch in the vent. So actually kids now couldn't use it um, without your help. So that 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 had changed a bit. Mm. Um, I think this new one's probably going to be the same. So it's, it it's nice for it's nice for adults, but when you're thinking about small kids, 
if everything's moved up high, they can't they can't turn the lights turn on. Lights on so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's an important point um, because we bought the base station as something that we could grow with the family. So we started off with uh, one baby in uh, physically a cot in the back and then the other one in a more of a small carry cot on here. So we could have separate spaces for them going to bed at different times. Um, and we really saw the base station as a caravan that would grow with the family. You know, it's it's great for the dads going with the bikes, but it's fantastic to be able to take all the kids' stuff, the toys, and physically the cot. So we had a full-size cot in the back, yeah. which was perfect. So home from home, the kids can sleep really easily. This, this tweak, um, although you've still got the space in the back, starts to make it a little bit trickier for the um, those toddler years. In a previous video, we talked about what we love about our base station and we talked about the speakers and we noticed in the 2024 model, the speakers are underneath the bed. What do you think? Um, yeah, there's been a couple of changes. So there's been about, well, at least three changes that we noticed. So with our version, we put the speakers up here underneath the cupboards, which is, we think, really quite good because it means the sound is at that kind of level. Um, and then on the 2021 20, 22 model, similar layout, they move the speakers to below the table, which kind of works when you're using the table for eating. But when you put the table down and make it into a bed, you've now lost all your speakers. So we didn't really like that about the 2021 20, 22 model. But this new 24 model, they seem to have now you've got rid of this bed space. They've put the speakers surface mounted on the side of the bed, aiming down the caravan. So I mean, they'll probably work okay. Um, I wonder how that affects space underneath the locker because um, you'll need a bit of space to inset that. And also with it being at that height, whether they get damaged um, as you climb in and out of the bed or kids swing their feet off the side of the bed, whether they'll get damaged. But um, yeah, it looks to be a better position than the, the 22, 21 model. I think it's going to be pretty good. The One of the things that annoys me is the speakers are back here. And if I'm in the kitchen or the main area, I can't really hear what's going, coming out the speakers because you have to sit here and be directly underneath. If it's coming out underneath the bed, you can actually hear it in the whole caravan. So I think that's a, a big positive. So on the new layout, there's some extra cupboard space, which is great. So over the bed here, we've got two cupboards uh, and then one over the TV. In the new one, because it's more in the van and more permanent, the cupboard space runs all around the top and over here. Um, you do lose these though because of the toilet space being here. So it's probably the same, if not slightly less capacity than we have here. The, the other thing is um, with the pop out, uh, with the fold out, you get a, a fan that you can string out and put inside the, the fold out as kind of a standard feature. So they seem to have, you don't have that feature anymore. You just have your air conditioning and you could upgrade fans and things. So just thought that was different. And also on the 2020 model, the TV is more towards the middle. It's by the door. And the TV on the 2024 model is more wide at the end over the bed. So I do wonder if you could see the TV from the sofa. Um, and as we said, we like using this sort of space as a day bed. The kids watch telly, we can watch telly from the bed and we can watch it from the sofa. And with the bathroom being between the TV and the sofa, I do wonder what you can see from the far end. Yeah, because the sofa's now moved two metres further into the van and the TV's moved a metre further up the van. Mm. So it's very much a TV now over the bed and not a TV that can serve as this one does the bed and the sofa. So one of the features, which is good, and um, a feature that I think you used to be able to get read, uh, put into the base stations in the early years, was the um, a larger window. So there's a larger window over the kitchen area, which in this one, there's actually space for a larger window. It just isn't a large window. And then they've actually gone and put a window where our TV is, which is the other side of the door in the new one, which again looks great, adds more light. Um, I do wonder why they perhaps didn't put a window now over the bed, because you could do, because there's now not a fold out. In the kitchen, not too much of a change. Uh, I do notice the microwave is up high, which I'm going to say is a good thing, because my little ones keep touching the microwave, turning it on every time they walk past. So if it's up high, it's a bit safer. However, that then means you lose a cupboard at the top. Also, I noticed they changed the kitchen in the 2022 model. And because we've got the 2020 model, we've still got drawers and quite a few individual cupboards, but they changed it to be quite a few big cupboards instead of drawers. I like drawers. Drawers mean that you can put a lot of things in each cupboard, you can store things away, as opposed to having one big cupboard, which you end up having to get storage solutions, maybe shelves, different individual boxes. Things can move around when you're traveling. What do you think of the kitchen? Yeah, I mean, for us, we might leave the cupboard doors open for quite a while, walk up and down mm. in the caravan and... You know, grab things out of the cupboards so by losing high up cupboards that you can leave the door open on 
and putting more cupboards down low, it means you're constantly opening and closing. We have the, the cupboard that's nearest in ours, the radio and the switches are on the end panel as you come in, so you lose a bit of that cupboard space to that. But we've stuck hooks to the inside, so we've got all of our keys and bits and bobs that hang up in there. So when you're setting up, you're coming in, you're grabbing a key, you're putting it back, you're, you're doing stuff. So it's good to be able to leave that open and use that as a utility cupboard on the end. Yep, the fridge looks to be very similar, so it's a fridge, fridge, freezer. Um, but the, ex the, the vent still goes outside um, on the same side as the door. And we've been told, people do seem to be able to get around it, particularly in Australia. We were told by JK we were not allowed to put an awning on the outside because of the fumes coming out of the, the gas fridge when it's on gas. Um, I have seen awnings that seem to offer that, but yeah, we've had trouble in New Zealand trying to get an awning for the side. So we still haven't seen this yet, and we're only looking at videos that we've seen online from the Melbourne show, but where's the pantry? I haven't seen any photos or videos that seems to include the pantry. I love the pantry. Did you see the pantry? Nope. No pantry! So, talking about the outside, I've already said how much I love the colour. What else have you noticed on the outside? Yeah, some actually really good improvements on creating that outdoor living space or cooking space. So the tray on the 2020 model being positioned down the back of the van, the fold-out tray, where you, so it means you're down the back of the van doing barbecue things. They've actually now moved the tray up towards the main door, and importantly, they've swung the door the other way. So our door, if you open the kitchen window and you open the door, the two hit trading off between having the window open and having the door open because the stay yeah. people have come up with extended stays but that doesn't work great so simply they've turned the door around so now it folds the other way which means um, you're actually opening the door and going out towards your outdoor eating space so that looks quite a good feature um yeah. don't know how it'll work with the new window they've installed over the, where the tv is but um oh, yeah Having the window over the kitchen that you can open makes sense because then people who are cooking inside can see what's going on outside a lot easier. You've got the, the TV locker which we've got which open inside you've got the, a 240 powerpoint and there's a fold out uh, mount for the TV. Just next to that there's a new locker there so I'm not quite sure what that is but it's a little locker looks like it could be a hopefully a useful small useful space. I also noticed the step is uh, now an aluminium fold away step, so just a little bit less weight. Yeah, and I, th I think the step um, is probably more user friendly. So the step we have is the big galvanised fold out step. Um, the heights are quite a big, quite a large step, again for the kids climbing down. Yep. And even as adults, sometimes every so often you just catch your heel oh, on the step. Um, and I've noticed when we've tried these more of these these um, retractable steps that are now on the new Jayco's, they are just a bit shallower and a bit longer of a tread depth. So that actually looks to be a much nicer um, step to use. The JTEC suspension caravans, um, you need an extra step anyway to be able to climb down really when you're camping. So, um, and it also means you've got a bit more ground clearance because I think they fold up higher, whereas the galvanized steps are bolted to the bottom and they just fold out. So you've actually got quite a lot of hanging down under the caravan. Four years ago, during COVID, we ordered a Jayco Toy Hauler 2020 model. If we were in the same position now, would we order the Jayco Toy Hauler Base Station 2024 model? If you hadn't, if you had, didn't know this was here with the slide out and all the bits we've discussed, and that was the only thing in the range that had the fold down door and the flexibility, it's still a very, very strong contender. We don't really need eight, eight sleeping positions, um, but the extra space is great. Um, but if you didn't have this as an option, it's still going to be a great caravan, absolutely. So it would make you think a little bit, uh, might push you towards maybe more of the family caravans, the, the journey, um, those type of caravans. So mm. they're great. Um, but yeah, so if you like the utility and the flexibility of the back door being able to be folded down, putting tools in the back, uh, moving big objects, uh, we use that a lot, particularly for doing long distance traveling or visiting family on the South Island, we can take stuff with us. Um, so yeah, we, we would still have gone for the base station, absolutely. So when the kids move up and fly the nest, what caravan are we getting? Well, yeah, we'd probably go for a silver line, wouldn't we? I think we would go silver line, wouldn't we? So in saying all this, if I'd like the luxury of the permanently up bed, the luxury of the silver line, that's what I'd be having. But because we've got the kids, particularly so young, and having that ability to carry stuff and, and put bikes in the back, we've got the base station and we love it, and we're going to keep it, but I think we've got ambitions. So we're looking forward to seeing the Jayco Base Station 2024 model in Auckland sometime soon. 
In the meantime, you'll see us about in our 2020 model with lots of adventures coming up. We've got Easter coming up and we've got Anzac weekend. So we'll be out and about in our caravan. Before our trip, I need to do a bit of organization and caravan storage because it's getting a bit of a mess inside the cupboards. So look out for that video coming out soon. I post every Friday, so I'll see you in my next video.